Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Please subscribe and stay tuned by clicking the bell icon. Sunny promises to help Ava after she confesses everything. And Sam and Cody are both suspicious of Gladys. Today on General Hospital, Curtis pushes Portia away. Michael and Willow enjoy their family, and Joss and Dex get hot while trying to keep cool. At Windermere, Ava admits to Sonny that Mason knows she killed Nicholas. Sonny says, he didn't disappear. Nicholas is dead, you killed him. She confirms it. They head out to the turret walkway, and Sonny asks where Nicholas' body is. She says it disappeared, and no, not in the water. She reveals Mason has it, and he's going to expose her if she doesn't do what he wants. Sonny says that won't happen. Ava explains she was so mad when she found out that Nicholas got Esme pregnant that she agreed to help Spencer try and get custody of Ace. She provided Spencer with the taped confession Nicholas made saying he pushed Esme off the turret. She explains how Nicholas went crazy when he found out what she did and threatened to take Avery. She says she lost it and hit him over the head with a small statue. Sonny asks how Mason fits in. Ava explains Austin showed up that night and he helped her cover up when she had the body in the tag house closet. She explains they were going to bury the body in the Pine Barrens after things cooled down with Nicholas going missing. But that was the night Esme gave birth, and Heather and Ryan turned up at the house. Suddenly, the cops swarmed the island and began searching everywhere. She explains how Dan found the locked closet in the tack house, and when he opened it, there was no body. She says Mason had followed Austin that first night and took the body to blackmail her. Sonny says, into spying on me. They head back inside and Sonny makes Ava a martini. Ava fears Mason may already have her mother, but Sonny swears nothing will happen to Delia. Ava knows Sonny's powerful, but even Mason seems afraid of the people he works for. She also says Mason still has Nicholas' body. Sonny reiterates he will take care of everything. Later, Sonny gets into his car and makes a call. He wants the person on the other end to find someone for him, dead is fine, but alive is preferable. At the gatehouse, Michael catches Willow folding laundry when she's supposed to be sleeping. Willow says she's too happy to sleep. She says she knows now she's going to live, and she never wants to miss out on anything, even the little things in life like folding laundry. They think back to her battle with leukemia, and she knew even if she didn't make it, Amelia and Wiley would be okay as they had him. Michael says he refused to accept losing her and couldn't imagine life without her. She says so basically, he's saying he was right all along. They kiss. Later, Wiley has late-night milk and cookies with his parents, and the boy tells Willow about his baseball games. She can't wait to come to one, but he says it's dirty, and he's worried about germs. She says she might not be able to come to his next game, but she'll make it to one of them when she's stronger. Michael tells his son to finish his cookie and head to bed. Wiley thinks it's not fair as they aren't in bed. Suddenly, Amelia begins crying. Michael brings Amelia down, and Wiley admits to his mom how scared he was when she was sick. Willow says she's better, and he doesn't have to be afraid anymore. Wiley asks if he can stay up all night, but Michael says only until Amelia goes to sleep. Eventually, Wiley and Willow fall asleep on the couch, and Michael holds Amelia while working on a tablet. He thinks about how lucky he is. Dant comes home to find Sam on the phone. Molly is in the hospital and a little banged up due to an accident, but she's okay and Christina is with her. Dant heads up to shower and later comes down in a fresh change of clothes. Sam brings up what happened with Sasha and Cody, and she is sure Gladys has something to do with it all. She says Gladys wasn't on board with Sasha ending her guardianship. She was determined to get Cody arrested, and she sold Brando's garage to Selena Wu. She wonders if she's seeing something that isn't there. Danke notes it's not like Gladys is a criminal mastermind, and unless she has proof that she had something to do with Sasha stabbing Cody. Sam admits she just doesn't like her and she doesn't think Sonny does, and he only tolerates her because of Mike. Sam is desperate to make a connection between Gladys, Sam Selena, and what happened why he came home so late. Dante tells her about Dex finding a dead body outside of GH and calling it in, which isn't what someone who works for Sonny normally does. Sam thinks they need some distraction from their work, and they begin to make out. Suddenly, someone begins banging on the door. Dante answers it, only to find Cody there. Cody walks in and then passes out as Dante catches him. They help him to the couch, and Cody explains he checked himself out of the hospital and just overdid it. Sam wants to take him back to the hospital, but he refuses. Sam heads to get some bandages, and later dresses his wound. Cody tells them both that what happened with Sasha makes no sense, as she was better, and he's sure Gladys has something to do with this. He apologizes for crashing their night, 
and will call a car service to get him back to the Q's place. However, Cuddy zonks out, and Sam tucks him into the couch with a blanket and pillows. Sam and Dante head to their room to finish what they started earlier. Joss drops by Dex's place, even though he told her not to come as his is AC out. She finds candles set up, and asks if he told her not to come, then who was he expecting? He jokes they better hurry up before they get caught by his girlfriend. He explains the AC is out in the whole building, and he's just trying to keep the temperatures down by shutting off the lights. He really didn't want her coming because of the heat. She thinks there is something more going on, and she hasn't heard from him since he left the pool. Dex admits he came across a dead body tonight. He explains Sonny had him following Austin, and this guy who turned up dead was in Austin's office earlier in the evening. Dex explains Sonny told him to call the cops, and it turned out it was Dant who came to investigate. She hopes Dante didn't harass him. Dex says he's just protective of Sonny and her. She says she doesn't need protection, and they kiss. They soon begin cooling each other down by rubbing ice cubes over each other, which leads them to making love. At the hospital, Curtis tells Portia to let him go as he doesn't want to see her again. Portia refuses to leave and says she's his wife. He states only on paper, as they never consummated the marriage, so an annulment won't be a problem. Portia won't give him an annulment as she loves him. He reminds her that they haven't been speaking for weeks until his accident. Curtis thinks she's only here because he needs her, but he doesn't need her pity. She reminds him what he said to her after he woke up, that he had come to see her at the pool after his talk with Sam. Portia knows he just got devastating information, and he's not the only spinal surgery patient to react the way he is. She says she is here because she loves him, and they will face this together as a family with Trina. Curtis says he won't be a burden to Trina, and he thinks it's best he does not see her again. Portia says Trina wants to be here, to support him. Curtis rants that parents are supposed to support their children, not the other way around. He doesn't think she needs to be nursing a pathetic man in a wheelchair. Portia states he's not the only one with this type of injury, and those other people didn't quit on their lives. She asks if he's going to quit being a father, because he can't be the father he wants to be. He says he is not the father who saved Trina from Victor Cassidine, and he tells her that she needs to walk out the door and never come back. Portia tells Curtis, like it or not, he's not on his own, and he's part of a beautiful family who all love him. Portia cries perhaps she never realized how much she loved him until she almost lost him. She says Sam was right, you never know how much time you have with the ones you love. Curtis says he knows what it's like to spend time away from one you love, because her lies kept him from spending time with his daughter. Events that is what he's been thinking about while stuck in this bed, the twenty years he lost with Trina. He tells Portia he doesn't want her staying with him, he doesn't trust her, and he doesn't want her. He yells at her to get out. Portia walks out in tears. On the next general hospital, Liz asks Portia what she's going to do. Sam asks Christina how she'd feel if she never had kids. Cotty says something sounds suspicious. Felicia walks into Maxie's apartment and asks what is going on here. Carly promises Nana that she's going to get back every single thing she lost. Sasha wakes up shackled to a bed in Ferncliff and asks, Hello, can someone hear me? If you liked the video, don't forget to like, comment, and share.